the offense sputters for the first time in the preseason. Who's going to step up with some of the injuries and expectations for the final game of the preseason on Saturday? That's next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked on Stars. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105.3 The Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. A pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for making this your first listen of the day. Locked on Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day. Be sure to subscribe. Never miss an episode of Locked on Stars, free and available wherever you get your podcasts as well on YouTube and we're almost to 2,000 subscribers. I think we're about 60 away. So continue to hit that subscribe button. Very, very excited to reach that milestone and continue to grow this community and uh, excited for a uh, another episode just because uh, preseason continues to roll on. And just one more little tune-up game in Minnesota here tomorrow. Uh, and that'll be it. And the Stars are ready to start playing some meaningful games coming up on October 12th uh, against the St. Louis Blues, who they were, of course, shut out yesterday by in uh, another game at home at the AAC. And look, I'll take the blame. It's all on me for boasting about this offense and raving about how great it's been throughout the first five games of the preseason and then boom, they lay a goose egg. So uh, I guess that's what I get for trying to lavish all these guys for all the great work they have done. And uh, they go out there and they get shut out by the blues yesterday, four to nothing. Another pretty solid lineup for the stars too at home. Uh, Sagan was in and Jamie Ben got to play even Jake Ottinger for the second time, which, I thought he would probably play tomorrow. Uh, I don't think you probably see Jake Ottinger play at all. Uh, And uh, we'll touch on that a little bit more uh, in uh, the final segment of today's show. Uh, And also want to talk about some guys that maybe have to step up and will eventually probably play on opening night just due to the fact that there's some injuries that are starting to pile up a bit. And with the stars wanting to probably be a bit more cautious than usual. They might hold off on some guys playing right away and just to ensure that they will be around instead of them missing longer stretches early this season. And uh, I think it's something that definitely, definitely has to be, uh, has to be touched on and there will be some decisions for coach Pete DeBoer uh, in the, in the staff. So stars shut out, of course, yesterday, four to nothing. Jordan Bennington got to play, uh, made 25 of 25 and just seemed like they were a bit more careless with the puck, uh, unfortunately. And, uh, a, a good game by the blues. Of course, they had more of their horses in Justin Falk with the goal, Robert Thomas, uh, a lot more of the guys we're going to see on opening night for St. Louis, as well. Uh, One of the more interesting parts of it is uh, Liam Bixel. And by the way, I just learned it is Bixel, which I think sounds a lot cooler than Bixel. So I apologize to him. Not that he's watching, but just want to make sure I have the correct pronunciation. So Liam Bixel um, with Yanni Hockenpah out now for the foreseeable future. He's another guy that's been banged up and He's going to be evaluated, so who knows kind of his situation. And uh, Bixel, the right-handed big defenseman, six foot five. We've talked about it, and a lot of people are very intrigued. More offensive upside than Hockenpah, uh, but still young. And we'll see how he fares uh, at the NHL level. Not really a guy, I guess, I was thinking is going to be on the opening night roster, but he is right-handed. And he was playing with Thomas Harley yesterday. Uh, And that's very, very 
interesting and I think fun for a lot of people to think about. The thing that would give me a lot of hope about him is uh, there's been some talk around, uh, I guess, the stars uh, that he he's looked a bit slow and maybe out of place in a few situations, but it hasn't been anything terrible. But uh, I think the stars are in a great position for a guy like Bixel to come in and maybe play every day right at the beginning. And, and I say this because with this offense, of course, they get shut out yesterday, but we think this offense is going to be very, very good in you and you're two under Pete DeBoer. It might be a great time to have a guy like Bixel, very, very young, of course, come in and get to play and have reps. And of course, there's going to be some bumps uh, in the road for a young guy playing in the National Hockey League for the first time. We see it with almost every defenseman. It's it's difficult and to understand how to play at that level to hold another ball game, uh, especially coming from juniors or even the AHL. So uh, it, it might be a situation where he has a chance to really get his feet wet for the first, you know, who knows? And and this is all dependent on Hawk and Pop, of course, but if he had to come play the first 15, 20 games, it, it might be a good experience for him. And you could play him with Harley. So you have the right left. Uh, that was the original pairing of Hawk and Pop and Harley that we thought we were going to see. But with him being out for now, maybe you just throw him into the fire a bit. And, uh, and and see how it goes. Um, and y- y- you have depth in that position. And that's why I think it's no better time to see maybe what he's made of <laughs> uh, a, a bit earlier than you expected. But uh, a chance for, for him to uh, really get it going. So, uh, again, the Blues, three third-period goals. Uh, to uh, beat the Stars four to nothing in yesterday's game, we got to see Ottinger versus Bennington, and Ottinger continues to get some work. Probably his final work of the preseason. I'm sure he'll be rested for the rest of the year, or not the rest of the year, but uh, the the final game tomorrow against Minnesota. And uh, I assume that is it for Mister Ottinger, and he will be in between the pipes between. Uh, or I guess against Jordan Bennington uh, on October 12th as preseason continues to roll on. Man, it's really flown by uh, and cannot believe it. Very, very excited to uh, get meaningful games rolling again. Tons of fun opportunities for some guys that maybe we didn't think we're going to get into the mix right away. And now you, you get to the point with, uh, some injuries and uh, of course I'm not pressing the panic button on any of them but if the stars want to be very cautious and not have some guys play right away you, you might get some jumbled combinations and some different guys playing with each other and and I think that's fun and uh, and the nice thing is I, I don't think it's going to hurt the product on the ice I, I really do think the stars have so much depth and some key positions they're going to be just fine uh, and for what we think this team should be and the expectations are. Uh, I don't think they're going to have a, a huge ton of issues if there's a, a few guys missing. Uh, so, uh, of course, we'll, we'll really, really dive into that next week. And, of course, with hockey finally being back and kind of just our overall predictions, I'll, I'll, I want to give my predictions on where I think the Stars are going to land uh, for for next season and, and all that good stuff. So uh, we'll continue, continue to, uh, I guess, dive into some of those details and uh, see what Pete DeBoer is going to cook up here uh, on opening night because he'll have some decisions and there's some guys uh, that have, have a chance to really establish themselves. And that's why I want to kind of, talk about maybe some guys that are going to fill in some spots and who needs to really step up for this year in order for the stars to make it to that next level and eventually get over the hump. And we'll do that in just a bit. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are 
wonderful. They make you look good. They have those stretch khaki shorts. They're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. They have those regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. That's not bird dogs. They fixed the issue. They invented this cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches to get you that way slimmer fit. It's good for movement. You don't have to sacrifice movement. You can lay on the couch, watch the stars. You can go out golfing, and you'll have the the same great feel and comfort throughout the day. They have anti-stink sweat as well, so it keeps you cool and dry all day long. It's functional for every single outing. Go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNHL or enter promo code LockedOnNHL at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash LockedOnNHL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Already back here on Locked On Stars. Thank you so much for making this your first listen of the day. Joey Erickson here with you and uh, excited just for for hockey to uh, really, really get going. And we are almost there. Also want to remind you that the NHL season, of course, starts next week. Uh, and Locked On has put together this kind of season preview uh, of the Western Conference and all that good stuff. You can actually find the episode. It's available now on this podcast feed, uh, and uh, I'm in it too, talking about Matt Duchesne a bit, and also my expectations and some guys I think who had the chance to break out. Um, and speaking of a, a few guys that may have a chance to break out this year, Who's going to step up? Who's going to be that guy? Uh, you, you can only expect that there may be a, some regression for uh, for a few guys, right? Um, you, you can't expect 39-year-old Joe Pavelski to go out again and just light the lamp and continue to be as productive as he can. But... Saying that, he probably will, <laughs> just because he doesn't seem to slow down, and Father Time has not caught up to that man yet. But uh, there's a, a few guys that I think have a chance to have some really big years, and one of them that I really, really love is Mason Marchment. I thought he was going to be the most underrated signing last year of the offseason. He played for years in Florida, did not play a, a ton of minutes, but was very productive in the opportunities he had. And he got off to that just roaring start, man. I mean, the few games against Nashville that he played, I know it's the first two contests of the year, but just so, so good. And it just seemed like he was going to be a perfect fit. And he only finished with 31 points and 12 goals on the season, which was a bit disappointing. But at the same time, I think those tools and his skill set can really, really just really flourish under this Pete DeBoer system. And he he has that bit of Alexander Radulov feel to him where he's a bit unhinged, right? He's kind of floppy and he's kind of all over the place, um, which gets him in trouble sometimes, of course. But at the same time, I think it... Uh, I think it helps his effectiveness and what he's really good at because he has such good size. And even when he wasn't scoring, I feel like he was doing a lot of productive things because uh, he, he brings a, a, a bit of that snarl to the game too, which uh, the Stars need a bit out of some of their guys. He's not afraid to mix it up, get in guys' faces, very, very physical. And he, he, he's really good with the puck too. And even with him being kind of that unhinged, I, I think he's excellent at, at, at on the four check and, you know, creating turnovers, creating havoc in front of the opposition. And I, I think with Sagan, he's, he's a great line mate and they played together a lot. Adding a guy like Duchesne, who's really going to be kind of your pure goal scorer on that line because Mark Schmidt really isn't uh, a goal scorer not even 
uh, as good of a playmaker as Radulov, but he has some of those characteristics where uh, he can drive to the net. He is still very effective as a passer, but really where he's going to thrive is just crashing the net and kind of getting those goals inside the circles, inside that dirty area. And having a guy like Duchesne now, I think creates some more space for that line or Sagan can go to work. He's more your 200-foot player now. Marchment can do what he does best. And then you have Duchesne that can just rip pucks at the net and uh, and kind of be the, the true goal scorer of the line. And I think Marchment's going to have a great year. And I don't think you can underestimate the fact, um, you know, his father did pass away last year. He came over from a new situation. And, I, I you know, that all plays on your mind. Look, he's a human too. Like, it was probably a bit of a shock having to come over and kind of get used to everything. Uh, it's a new system. It's a new clubhouse and not clubhouse, but uh, a new dressing room. And you have to take all that into account. And there was flashes, right? And I think, I think he just has so much untapped potential, 47 points in Florida in 54 games in 2021-22. And he's got way better line mates than he ever had in Florida. Way better. And he, yeah, he's he, he may not get as many minutes in Dallas, but I think there's so much to be encouraged by him. And I just, I really, really like him. <laughs> so I, I think, I think he's going to have a, a big year. I think he's going to be one of those guys that kind of breaks out. Okay. Enough on Marchment. Let's talk a bit about Logan Stankoven. He continues to impress. He's standing out, which is a great sign, t- too, because he's playing against more of your NHL regulars as we get deeper into this preseason. Uh, we'll have to, uh, of course, Lean Bixel again, having to step up and play with uh, Thomas Harley yesterday, with Hawk and Pie out now for who knows. He will be reevaluated. Very, very excited there. Uh, just some more updates on some guys. Rope Hints. Uh, he skated uh, on Tuesday, continues to get better. Johnston did not skate. He actually had a non-surgical procedure go on. Uh, Radic Foxy got stitches for that hit he took against Colorado the other night, but he's not in pro- uh, concussion protocol, which is a good sign. And of course, Hawk and Pop is injured and they will have to re-evaluate him and see where he stands. So this gives guys like Delandry a big opportunity because he, of course, is going to be fighting for some minutes on the fourth line, which I don't think he's going to be fighting for much. It, it seemed like he was going to be there with Radic Foxa, Craig Smith, and Sam Steele. It just was going, he was still going to have to fight in order to kind of establish himself. But of course, Pete DeBoer probably trusts him. He's been in the system already. So uh, it looks like Delhi's going to have an opportunity to play a more expanded role. And who knows if guys like Johnston and Rope are out. You'll probably see Delandria get pulled up into the lineup because we've already seen it before. He, he played with Dodonov and uh, Ben a little bit. He played with Ben and Johnston a bit during last season before Dodonov came over. Um, and and the, I don't think that's really the best role for him as a top six guy. Uh, and, and I've touched on that before. I think he's best in kind of that fourth line role. I, an ideal situation on a... Stanley Cup winning team. I think the Landry is at best a third line winger slash center, right? Uh, but I, I, I think his better role is kind of your fourth line. Muck it up. Can, has a bit more offensive upside. And I think that's a, a really nice, really nice spot for him. But also you can't count on guys like Maverick Bork and Logan Stankoven now. And you know, I've been kind of the one to say, start him in the AHL. That may not be the situation now. That may not be an option. <laughs> but at the same time, Pete DeBoer even touched on a uh, a couple of days yesterday. They're fortunate. They have tons of depth. Um, they have Craig Smith. They have Sam Steele awaiting in the wings. That may get to play if you don't want to bring those guys up right away and, and throw them into the fire. So th- there's all these different situations where some guys that we didn't think were going to be huge, huge key part components of this thing. Now might have to, to play a bit with, um, with the stars being cautious. And I thought it was a, a great point. I read from somebody in the comments 
uh, yesterday too about how Pete DeBoer really had a few seasons derailed in Vegas due to injuries. They lost an extraordinary amount of man games in Vegas when DeBoer was at the helm. And the stars are probably looking at this and be like, hey, let's not push anybody back or, or push anybody back too quickly just for them to be here on opening night, right? Who cares? They're thinking way down the line. Let's let them be 100% confident in their abilities when they step on the ice that, yeah, who knows if maybe some guys miss 10 games at the opening stretch. Who cares, so to speak? <laughs> because I, I think the, the West is pretty open. The Central is. I think the Stars will be fine. Uh, of course, you don't want to have bad stretches. When you lose three games in a row, it seems like you lose a, a ton of ground. So you have to be thinking about that. But there is, uh, there, there is something uh, there that I think you can hold off and, and not force guys back because you don't want the the season to be derailed by, uh, derailed by injuries. Because last year it really wasn't because they had so much success. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll see how that. How, how that shapes up. All righty, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up today's episode, talking about some expectations for the final game against the Wild uh, and uh, what we can expect tomorrow night in Minnesota to wrap up the preseason before the first game against the old St. Louis Blues upcoming here on September 12th, October 12th, excuse me. The month went by so fast, and we'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed, they understand the hiring process can be very, very hard. But thankfully for you, Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can just do that all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80%. Indeed knows when you're growing your business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why you need Indeed. You only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Already final segment underway here for Locked On Stars. Thank you so much for all your support. Go ahead and hit subscribe. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Excited to wrap up a- another week. And then hockey is officially back, baby. Tons of tons of great games on the docket. Uh, I know Connor Bernard's making his preseason debut against Sidney Crosby on the 10th. So there's a, a huge, huge amount of games on the slate upcoming for next week. Very, very excited to just kind of sit down for a few days and take it all in. And of course, you have the stars coming up to play the blues. Okay. Final game here tomorrow against Minnesota. That game is actually being televised. It'll be on Bally Sports North, though. The stars are not, from what I've seen, the stars are not covering it uh, with it being in Minneapolis or I guess St. Paul actually at the XL. Unfortunate. So I guess you can watch it, but you're going to have to be uh, forced to the Minnesota Wild feed, which I think they're pretty good. I listen to a lot of games d during my day in college. I, I like them, but of course, they're going to be very focused on the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> uh, kind of like that game on NHL Network against Colorado where they were just talking about the apps, which is to be expected. Look, uh, they're not going to be diving into all the depth pieces the Stars have and some of the guys uh, in the AHL. As I mentioned earlier, I think Ottinger's done. He probably doesn't play tomorrow. I, I would be surprised if guys like Pavelski and maybe Sagan travel to Minneapolis for the final game. I, I don't know. Uh, they've already gotten a few games under their belt. They're veterans. They're probably fine. You might see someone like Robertson, though, however, continue to play 
Uh, even March might go up there and, and get some more reps in. Uh, I don't know how they're they're all going to uh, how they're kind of going to kind of play this. Uh, Sam Steele probably jumps in because he he's a guy that's probably still fighting for some ice time. I think Logan Stankov and Kyle McDonald, who is recalled from the AHL, and Maverick Bork will all be playing because uh, if they really really shine. They probably get penciled in. <laughs> uh, otherwise, they're they're going down the AHL. There'll be a few more roster shakeups before it all is said and done. But uh, plenty of opportunities for some guys to make some make a name for themselves, right? Um, I I think more guys are going to rest for opening night. Like you're probably not going to see Essel Lindell, Thomas Harley, um, Miro probably doesn't play either. Uh, you know, I don't know, but. They're, they don't have a huge lot of numbers, so some of them will have to. We'll see how it, how it all plays out. But I think it's just important to see see some guys one more time for Pete DeBoer. Get an idea for who your pairings are, which I think they already do on the back end. But they may have to shake some things around. And this is one more time where you get to see Lean Bixel play. All righty. Who does he fit in with? Because you, you think he might slide in there with Harley. Maybe you want him to play with Lindell, right? Uh, and break up the Niels Lundquist pairing there. There's opportunities to really play some guys with someone else. And some people you did not think that were going to match up well. And um, you'll probably see Minnesota play more of their horses in that game. Uh, of course, it's, it's at home for them. So they want to have a, a good showing on home ice. And with some of the injuries that have already started to to kind of rack up for the stars, I don't think they want to put anybody at any extra risk. Uh, they probably just want to be more cautious. Like, hey, let's just get through this game. Nobody gets hurt, <laughs> uh, which is easier said than done. Look, it's the NHL and guys are fighting for spots. So uh, people are going to get banged up. There's bumps and bruises along the way. But if you can get out of this game mostly healthy and you feel good heading in to – October 12th, that is a win for the whole staff. And the Stars will be rocking and rolling come opening night at the AAC, which is so, so excited. That building's going to be rocking. I know many people have had the chance to go out already. If you have, please comment below about your experience. Has it been fun to kind of watch preseason hockey again? I know there's some uh, cool new features in the building with the, uh, the new scoreboard, which looks pretty cool. Uh, so I guess shout out Mark Cuban and, uh, Tom Gallardi. I'm sure they had something to do with that, with, uh, bringing the new scoreboard in looks, uh, looks pretty fancy if I do not say myself. So I can't wait to check that out in person. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, the AAC let's pack it up, baby. Victory green. Let's pack it up. Get that place rocking. What an atmosphere it was in the spring last year. And of course it was the first time that, uh, well, I guess it wasn't the first time, but, uh, of course, postseason hockey returned and it just had a different vibe from the, the series against Calgary from a few years ago, man, that place was just, was just bumping. And so, so fun. The electric atmosphere in the Western conference finals and from the bubble run where that wasn't experience for stars fans, uh, really sucked to be honest. <laughs> so it was, it was awesome to, to see that. And uh, with, with the team that we're shaping up to have before our eyes here this year, it's going to be a heck, heck of a time. So uh, get to pack that building and, and get the place bumping. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Today on Friday, a Locked On Stars part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. I have a few games this weekend for the Chippewa Steel, so I'll be very, very busy. Got two games today and tomorrow. And you can check out some of the work and stuff I do on Joey the Jet 19 uh, on the X and the Twitter. Sometimes I, I repost the highlights and all that stuff. So <laughs> excited to get back into it. Um, uh, the boys are rolling right now. They've won three in a row. So I'm hoping they can uh, get off to uh, a, a bit of a streak here this weekend. And of course, I hope the stars do as well. So that's going to do it. Thank you so much for taking me in, making a part of your day on this Friday. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you upcoming on Monday. So long, Stars fans.